We all know that plastic is completely destroying the environment. Plastic bottles aren't being properly recycled, which leads to them being dumped in one of two places. The ocean, where the water currents cause them to clump together into massive islands of trash, such as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is twice the size of Texas. These floating pits of plastic completely decimate the marine life. Fish get stuck in water bottles all the goddamn time. More importantly for us though, they'll eat the little floating bits of plastic, either because they think it's food because their eyes can't see worth shit, or because they just so happen to swim into it with their mouths gaping open. And that bit of plastic goes from the ocean, to the fish, onto a fisherman's boat, before ending up on our dinner table, where we eat it into our stomach. Which is kind of poetic actually. We throw plastic into the ocean, and in retaliation, the ocean throws it back into our bodies. It's estimated that we eat an average of one credit card worth of plastic every single week as a result of our oceanic plastic dumping. Believe it or not though, literally eating the plastic we toss into the ocean is actually preferable to the alternative, landfills. The invention of PET plastic in the 1970s was an absolute godsend. It let us produce cheap, light, sturdy containers on a massive scale. But PET plastic also has one major downside. I know it, you know it, everybody knows it at this point. So say it with me now. Plastic, plastic doesn't, doesn't, doesn't decompose. decompose. One of the major benefits of PET plastic when it was first introduced was its longevity, allowing us to store items inside of them for an extended period of time. Ironically, that same perk of plastic is now a massive downside, as plastic containers get trapped in mountains of landfill in poor countries. While stuck in landfills, they release methane into our ozone layer. I'm going to assume you already know how methane is destroying our atmosphere, along with the consequences of a depleted ozone, since the effects of climate change are very well known at this point. And I don't want to waste your time as a viewer talking about the effects of climate change that you probably already know about. So plastics suck. As a direct result of plastic sucking, a whole new industry of alternative plastics has opened up. These are plastic substitutes that promise to be equally as efficient as PET plastics with less or even none of the downsides. But the plastic alternatives we have aren't exactly honky dory neither. So take a seat, turn down the lights, and crack open a nice drink of, well, I don't honestly care what you drink from. I'm not your mother, but hopefully it's not one of these. Individual glass bottles like this it's even worse for the environment than plastic. I don't even know if you can see this, you probably can't, the lighting is too low. Whatever. Glass bottles are nice and hefty. It makes you feel fancy drinking from a heavy glass bottle. But that's exactly the problem with glass containers. It's heavy, it's dense, it's very expensive to ship. Both for the shipping company, and more importantly, for the environment. According to the BBC, it can cost up to five times the amount of money to ship glass as opposed to plastic bottles, the cost of which is paid by us, the consumer. The shipping cost isn't just slapped onto the price of a drink in a vacuum. Corporations aren't just making glass bottles more expensive because they want us to suffer. I mean, they probably do want us to suffer, but there's also a non-sadistic reason for charging more money. The extra weight of the glass means the trucks and airplanes transporting the bottles are less fuel efficient which ultimately means they're burning more fuel to move the bottles from one point to another. Which is obviously horrible for the environment. The bulky nature of glass bottles means that less bottles can be placed on each truck, meaning the trucks carrying glass is not only less fuel efficient, but more trucks are needed to transport the same amount of bottles a load of plastic containers would require. Environmentally, glass requires an additional 40% more energy to make compared to plastic. Or in other words, for every glass bottle we buy, we could have bought around 5 plastic bottles for the same amount of money. Or made nearly 1.5 plastic bottles with the same levels of emission. Glass bottles may be expensive and environmental deadweights, but a unique positive quirk about glass that none of the other materials on this list have is that since they're so easy to clean, 
You can just keep them after you finish drinking your drink, and use them to hold new liquids. While glass has an expensive upfront cost to manufacture and transport, each subsequent time you reuse a glass bottle to hold a drink you otherwise would have bought a brand new bottle for, there's one less bottle that has to be made to sustain your drinking habits. This is why reusable water bottles are so important for the environment. This is what an economist would call the environmental opportunity cost of bottled water. I don't want to turn this to a video about economics, so I won't spend too much time going into this subject, but the important bit to note is that since glass bottles require 1.4 times more energy to manufacture, it's better for the environment if you drink from the same glass bottle twice instead of buying two PET plastic bottles. Since it's five times more expensive to transport a glass bottle compared to a normal PET plastic bottle, you will have made your money back after your fifth time reusing the glass bottle. And yes, you could theoretically reuse any of the containers on this list, but it's a lot easier to reuse a glass bottle compared to the other plastic alternatives. And you actually have to reuse the bottle for it to be environmentally superior to plastic. That's the important part. Another perk of glass is that they're easy to recycle. However, very few glass bottles actually make it to the recycling center. Any glass bottles that do embark on the journey to recycling are faced with the same problem they had earlier, of more expensive shipping. This problem that glass bottles have of not actually being recycled is not only shared by PET plastic, but also by plant-based plastic. Plant-based bottles, like this, are bottles marketed as being 100% recyclable, but the truth is, it's all just marketing. Bioplastics can theoretically be broken down completely in a relatively short amount of time, yes. But that can only happen in a highly controlled environment made explicitly for the purposes of recycling bioplastics. Very few places have the required facilities to properly break these bioplastics down. If a bioplastic bottle ends up in the ocean or a landfill, it just becomes another piece of plastic, releasing methane into the atmosphere, regardless of what it's made from. This bioplastic bottle isn't going to break down in a landfill or an ocean. The biggest problem with our dependency on plastics is that they aren't being recycled. We toss them into the recycling bins, but all the recycling centers do with the bottles is ship them to Asia, where they either sit in landfills or get dumped into the ocean. If we don't actually start recycling plastics, it's not going to matter what our bottles are made from. Mind you, we've only talked about the recycling aspect of bioplastics. We haven't even touched on the manufacturing process yet. According to the Earth Institute of Columbia University, many bioplastics are made from a corn-based product, the production of which resulted in greater amounts of pollutants due to the fertilizers and pesticides used in growing the crops, and the chemical processing needed to turn organic material into plastic. The bioplastics also contributed more to the ozone depletion than the traditional plastics and required extensive land use. BPET, the hybrid plastic, was found to have the highest potential for toxic effects on ecosystems and the most carcinogens, and scored the worst in the life cycle analysis because it combined the negative impacts of both agriculture and chemical processing. Plant-based plastic containers like this one, made from a mixture of both biodegradable materials and PET plastics, are even worse. Because then, not only are they using the same PET plastic that we're all trying to avoid, but they still have the same toxic manufacturing process we just talked about. It's literally the worst of both worlds. Plant-based or otherwise, plastic is still going to pollute our planet in the same way. Boxes to hold juice, water, and wine is the single dumbest idea the beverage industry has ever come up with. Take this box of juice I found at Whole Foods for $37, for example. Boxed water will claim to reduce the transportation costs because the convenient shape of a box allows for easier storage. It's like how Tetris would be the easiest game in the whole entire world if every block was a square block. 
but the transportation advantages fall apart when you take into consideration that literally every single item being shipped in bulk is done so in a box-shaped pallet for this exact same reason. They also claim that the box is entirely biodegradable, which just isn't true at all. The physical box itself might be biodegradable, but they're always going to be laced with plastic or aluminum on the inside because, you know, cardboard isn't exactly good at holding in water. Here's a demonstration. This is a box of water claiming to be made from paper. Paper, like this sheet of paper that I've written this video script on. So, just for an experiment, let's take this sheet of paper and introduce it to some tap water. And look. Look at what happens when paper meets water. This is what your paper box water is claiming to be made from. In fact, many times they're even worse for the environment than normal PET plastic since cardboard can't be recycled with plastic. So if, as it often happens, the plastic bag gets stuck to the cardboard, the entire thing becomes trash. The plastic and aluminum on the inside of boxes aren't biodegradable any more than the plastic bottles or aluminum cans are biodegradable. Aluminum cans. They're better than a fucking box, but they'll also give you cancer and kill your ovaries. Aluminum cans are the most commonly used plastic container alternative, and for good reason too. Pure aluminum cans are a cinch to recycle. It's even easier to recycle pure aluminum cans than it is to recycle glass. But, and this is a big but, most aluminum cans aren't pure aluminum. The discovery of aluminum was one of the most pivotal moments in metallurgical history. Aluminum is incredibly soft and malleable. Which is important for the ease of manufacturing new products, but it also makes aluminum less than ideal in the role of beverage containers. Just like how PET plastic's longevity ended up being a double-edged sword, so too is the softness of aluminum. So the solution to this problem was to mix the aluminum in cans with magnesium. Because who would want to buy a can of Pepsi if it was all smashed up? Notice how when I struck the Pepsi on the side earlier, it was completely dented in? The sides of the cans are just normal, low-grade aluminum but the top and bottom of the cans are made from the sturdy, robust aluminum-magnesium hybrid alloy. So, smacking the top and bottom of the cans will barely cause it to deform. This blend ensures it's still got the feather lightness of aluminum, but it's also got the hard sturdiness of magnesium. Unfortunately, this mixture of aluminum and magnesium can't be recycled. Bummer, I know. There are companies out there looking for a solution to this problem, but we're still a while off from something viable. The body of the can is made from normal low-grade aluminum, which fortunately can be recycled. Unfortunately though, there's a fine line between can be recycled and will be recycled. Because it turns out that most of the global demand for aluminum is for the construction of airplanes and cars, the manufacturers of which flat out refuse to build their vehicles from the low-grade aluminum found inside aluminum cans. Which makes sense. I personally would not want to ride in an airplane if I knew it was made from discarded cans of Bud Light. But this does also mean that, right now, there are entire mountains filled with perfectly recyclable aluminum cans just sitting in landfills because no one wants to buy them. Like I just said, the discovery of aluminum was an absolute godsend. Aluminum cans are light, easy to open, cheap to manufacture, and easy to dispose of. They are also laced up the wazoo with BPA and styrene, both of which are in California's Proposition 65, a list of toxic chemicals known to cause cancer, birth defects, or reproductive harm. According to the Harvard School of Public Health, BPA is a known cause of infertility, all the major health organizations from the U.S. National Toxology Program to the International Agency for Research on Cancer have reported that there's strong evidence that styrene causes cancer. And unfortunately, drinking from aluminum cans puts your own personal health in jeopardy. It seems like no matter what we choose to drink from, we're either dooming the planet, our wallets, or our bodies. 
we need to hold the plastic companies responsible for their role in the dumping of plastic. But I'm not going to talk about that. This video is about the many shortcomings the alternatives to plastic have. Plastic alternatives aren't really fixing the problems that PET plastics bring. And none of these alternatives will ever be as cheap, easy to make, or reliable as the classic old PET plastic. So, in the interest of staying in my lane, I'm going to instead recommend that you watch John Oliver's recent video on the subject of PET plastic disposal. It's much more entertaining than the one you just saw. If you found this video informative, then please drop a comment down below and leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. My next video will be about psychedelic mushrooms, so feel free to subscribe if you want to watch it when it comes out.